we all want more power, right? So even though I've got 22 solar panels up on my roof, when All Powers said they'd like to send me a couple of 200 watt flexible panels for me to test, I said, sure, send them over. And All Powers sent them to me and they said, try your best, destruction, testing, whatever you want. And so they're these flexible, portable ones that I can take camping. They also sent me to connect into it and um, for a bit of testing, the S2000 portable power station. And I've been thoroughly putting this stuff through its paces over the last three weeks and doing a bit of comparison against some of my other equipment. And I'm very impressed, but I'm gonna run some of the tests now and then you can come back to me for the conclusion at the end. Okay, test number one, here we go. I've just laid out the two panels. We've got solid cloud at the moment. There's no sun breaking through just yet, but let's see what we can pick up anyway. So, I've drained this pack right down, running my PC and stuff off it. Plug it in, straight away it's registered. Can you see there, 4% we're down. And at the moment it's eight o'clock in the morning and we're already getting 46 watts being generated. A completely cloudy sky. Timestamp, 10 to 11. Wow, 29%, not bad. It's currently trickling in at just 87 watts, but I'm pretty impressed with actually, that's got to 29%. Wow, okay, better than I expected considering it's just the cloud is even more solid than it was earlier. So barely a break, so we've had the best week of solar ever, and then the day I decide to test it, nothing. Hmm, okay, well this is an absolute worst case scenario of summer camping. It's just gone 1 p.m. We've got a leaf on the panel. Where are we at? Our little update. 44%, we're currently taking in 120 watts. The cloud cover has not let up, not at all, but anyway. We've gone from 4% to 44% and now it's just after 1 p.m. So it's looking quite good actually, considering this is probably the worst case scenario. No direct sunlight, it's all just diffused through clouds. I'll have to run the test again on a perfectly sunny day and see what kind of power we can extract from these panels. It's the 4 p.m. update. Total shade, well, not shade, but totally overcast. See that thick cloud cover and we're at 71% and only 49 watts coming in. It seemed to just get greyer and greyer and greyer today. Worst day for testing but I'm impressed. 4pm, we've still got another four hours of daylight minimum and we've gone from 5% to 70%. All we need is an hour or two of actual direct sunlight and we might have this fully charged. Not bad for our first test. Quarter to six update, we still haven't had a little bit of sunshine. This solid cloud, only 75%, 44 watts. And if anything, it's just grayer than ever. Oh dear. Okay, 9 p.m., end of day one. We finished at 86%. So not too bad considering this is the worst solar day we've had for several weeks. And that is based on my main array on the roof of the house. So figures looking very bad, very cloudy, but we've still put more than 80% into the battery over the course of the day from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. Okay, it's day two, it's 7 a.m. We, the battery is at 5%. We've currently got 36, 37 watts incoming. Oh, it's rising. I've leaned up against the fence. It's the only place in the garden that's currently got sunshine at 7 a.m. But I thought to give this a fighting chance, let's start it earlier than 9 a.m. See where we get to by the end of today. 7 a.m. out. Okay, it's 12.30, time for an update, Let's see how we're doing, it's been a medium solar, we're already there, 99%, it's only sucking in 60 watts, I know that these packs start 
reducing down how much they can absorb once they get full. So I did remove the solar panels as you can see. Instead of lying them down, they've been standing up. They were standing against that fence until the sun started moving, moved it across there. I haven't been able to pop out because I have been at work all morning. So I've come home for lunch and it is charged. So that's from 5% up to full between 7 a.m. and 12.30. And the day has been a medium day for solar. You can see it's a bit of cloud cover. We're got the sun behind the clouds at the moment but it's been patchy on and off well there you go that's the update if you didn't see my last video then you won't be aware that this little thing can power a two kilowatt heater angle grinder slow cooker for four hours lawn mower hair dryer just pretty much everything we could throw at it but all power sent me this and it can double everything so it's got double the uh capacity in terms of how long it will last it's got double the max power output and the sustained power output so when you're jumping from a thousand watts on this you're jumping up to two thousand watts on this where this is seven six eight watt hours this is about 1500 so again about double and you can see it even doubles up on the plug sockets we're going here from two plug sockets up to four plug sockets and we got six usb Ah, four, almost double. Anyway, I want to show you a couple of things that we found out about the Blue Etty. So if I plug in my microwave and turn on the AC side, on goes my microwave. Microwave doesn't sound very healthy. Actually, the last time we tried it, it did trip out this Blue Etty. But here we go, it's doing 1261 watts, but not sounding very healthy. If I now plug it into the all powers. Oh. Sounds absolutely normal. It's definitely more comfortable anyway. However, so once again, we're outputting, well, 1300 watts. So it is outputting a little bit more, but the microwave is comfortable. Anyway, onto the hairdryer. My wife tells me this is a good hairdryer and she wants Parlux to uh, send her some freebies, okay? Plug this in on the Blue Etty side. And if I... If I put it on the normal, on the low setting, that's 1000 watts. But if I turn it onto the higher setting, it turns down the fan when you turn up the heat. So it's struggling to, it jumps down to 860 watts. Whereas on the all power side, when you turn the power up to high, it goes up to 1261 watts, 1689 watts. There are almost 1700 watts. And so it can do both full fan and full heat. No problem at all on the all powers just shows us a bit more and it tells me at the moment we've got 50% battery and it's saying it will sustain this for 21 minutes at 1700 watts quite impressive I hope that gives you a little snapshot although the Blue Etty can power some of these things it reduces down I don't know if it's reducing down the current and sustaining the volts to keep these appliances going but it's not it won't it's not strong enough to do this like proper high grade uh, hairdryer properly or to do our microwave which is a 900 watt output but of course the input is different on that whereas the all powers you throw anything at it um also tried our tumble dryer but it is a heat pump tumble dryer easily powered that um the only thing I can't really put a plug on was plugging in my induction hob and my, uh, you know, 
fitted oven. That would be the only other appliance I've got that could probably trip out this all powers. But where we have seen the Blue Etty beep and trip out on us on several occasions, especially once you start running two or so um, things on it, this one absolutely no problem. And of course, that's without even connecting in the solar input. Um, that's just using the inbuilt battery and it will sustain some of those high load appliances. Anyway, enough waffling. So what's my conclusion from all this testing? Well, I think they're more than man enough to keep a portable power station topped up. Depends what your demand is and what you're going to use it for. But if it's just casual use and camping in a camper van, something like that, I think it's going to be brilliant. And for most people, you probably get away with just one panel. If you're going to be a heavy user, then two panels is probably the way to go. So uh, in the summer, you're going to be absolutely fine. Take this away. And if you've got some of the suction mounts that I've just ordered, you can just suction this onto the outside of your car or your camper van or whatever and have it at kind of a vertical angle or you can just rest it on the roof and hook it up and it's got plenty enough cable so i'm pretty impressed i've had a look around at some of the prices i think that this all powers sf200 model is pretty pretty competitively priced so you're going to get decent value for money and plenty of watts per pound well there you have it with all the testing shown on pretty much the worst solar day and then a medium solar day so you can see these solar panels are more than man enough to top up something like this portable power station some of the testing i didn't record was to show that this can run a microwave no problem hair dryer flat out you name it pretty much it can do everything because it can sustain 2000 watts and it can surge up to 4000 watts so you won't have any trouble running anything, especially in a, in a kind of portable scenario. Um, what do I think about the solar panels? Well, I'm not sure if the folding type would be more convenient, um, but what do I like about these? They are easy to move around. They are easy to prop up. Um, you can stand them portrait vertical, um, landscape horizontal um, and what about the actual output they have a standard mc4 connector on there as you may or may not be able to see mc4 connectors so you can connect them up to anything really um, they work perfectly well on something like a shed roof if you just want easy quick portable setup um, of course you can get little suction bits as well that can connect these on to glazing um, they can go on outside of camper vans. I guess there's loads of other uses that I'm probably not even thinking of. I've just been throwing them around the garden and uh, just kind of lobbing them here, there and everywhere. They are rugged, they are well built. I was a bit wary of this kind of flexy nature, but it's okay, you can just chuck them wherever. They perform really well. In terms of the power output, the, the Potential is 200 watts. I never quite saw that, but I wasn't optimizing these for the perfect angle, for the per perfect airflow underneath them. Most of the time, I just had them sat against the fence or flat on the patio, but I was still seeing a good 75 to 80% of their uh, potential output. So I could easily, easily see 160, 170 watts on a, in pretty good conditions when these are rated at 200 watts. So no doubt in my mind, if you could perfectly position them and you had nice cool temperatures and good direct sunlight, I'm sure they'll achieve their 200 watts, maybe beyond as well. Whether they're good value for money, that's for you to decide. Um, if you can get good use out of these and you've got a good use case, then I think they're a good worthwhile investment. Do you need two of them? Well, that really depends on how much you're trying to do with one of these portable power stations. Oh, here it goes. If you are going to be using one of these quite continuously on a boat, you know, uh, a canal boat or on a, in a camper van or something, maybe you would benefit from the two of them, especially if it's a real cloudy overcast day like I showed on that bad day. 
But I think for most of the time, if you're taking one of these portable power stations camping during the summer, I think one of these panels would be more than enough for most people just to keep it topped up. Right now, after that last test, it's up at 90%, 99%. So that's all you've got from me. Um, all Power sent me these and they didn't demand any editorial control or any preview before I send the video out live on the internet which is always one thing that I make sure to get in writing from them before I receive any products. So although if you do go ahead and purchase any of these All Powers items, I will uh, have financial benefit from it, but that doesn't affect my review in any way. I think value for money, the All Powers does beat the Blue Etty. The Blue Etty, I think in some areas in the UI, may have a slight bit of polish, but you pay a big premium for it compared to the All Powers. So I think both the solar panel and the portable power station, I think they probably are the best value for money. So if you are looking down this line of getting something like this for whatever your application may be, even if it's just an off-grid man cave, uh, I don't know, a garden allotment shed or something, and I think these do fit the bill really well. Rugged, well-priced, and they perform exactly as the specs say and exactly as the manufacturer claims. So that's everything. I can't add any more than that. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. Farewell.